Here we are for a large tasting. Today I am tasting eight very old meads. Let's get started. All right, so in front of me, I have eight very old meads. And I mean very old. Like these are some of my first meads I ever made. So um, I'm gonna taste test through them. Now I could have done, I could have milked this and done eight different videos for this, but honestly, I've got better content to upload and I don't really know that these are gonna be worth an entire video themselves. So uh, I'm glad you're here for the tasting. If you were curious about these brews, they are from the, the beginning of the channel. And uh, I don't know that I'm gonna go in sequential order of you know first one to last one necessarily, but we're just gonna go for it. I don't even remember what's where. So we're gonna go with this one right here. This one's not super clear. Oh, this the haziest one of it all. That's why I chose it. This is the a Red Delicious Apple and Cinnamon Brew. It was made in, or on August 14th, 2017. Um, and bottled May 15th, 2018. Now, the fun thing about this situation is, well, fun or it could be bad. I, uh, most meads have a shelf life, believe it or not. I think we, we want to assume that our meads are gonna last us years and years and years. These ones, I don't believe were going to last years and years and years uh, because I don't know if I had the right process. Given the right process and situations, maybe you can make it last forever but these did not for sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. All right, let's go ahead and pour this sucker. I'm just gonna pour a little bit. I mean, it looks pretty good, I will say. I'm not gonna have a lot of these. I do have some water here, just in case. It looks pretty good. Uh, Red Delicious Apple, I put cinnamon. This is like the one that started my apple and cinnamon kick, which I have, since this brew, I feel like I've, I'm not gonna say mastered, but I've definitely gotten better at it. The cinnamon is, is I mean, the aroma is so nice. It is very candle-like. Oh yeah, I love that aroma. Not a lot of booziness on the nose. Uh, we're like four and a half years old, so I hope the booziness would be down. I don't have all my specs on these, so sorry. It's not back sweetened, but it's smooth. Ooh. The body of this is really nice. Um, I, I will note that none of these have been back sweetened. When I made these, I was not comfortable enough with mead making to, to try to back sweeten things. Um, I was a little too nervous to, so I didn't back sweeten. So this is dry. I will say the, the apple character is very obviously fruity. It's mellow. The cinnamon is nice and rounded. The honey character is also kind of um, warming. Like this is a very warming, perfect to drink right now because outside it is a, a blizzard. So perfect for that situation. I That's pretty dang good. I will be setting this bottle aside. Um, I, I, I think it's probably 14-ish percent. I don't really know, but I'm gonna set that one aside because that is pretty dang good. Um, let me grab some more glasses. I was going to just rinse out each glass, but I actually want to keep that one. <laughs> I don't know if they'll be the same for each one of these. Next up, we have a traditional orange blossom brew. This one is very clear. I'm going to try and not disturb the lees on it at all. Let's open this one up. Here we go. Oh man, that one looks good. That clarity. Oh dang, that's a good looking brew. Woo. There was definitely some stuff at the bottom. You can see, no, I think that's just the glass painting. Anyways, ooh, I don't know about this one. It's got a, um, a very warm nose, not a lot of bright honey, anything to help. It's got some, some funk. It's definitely mellow, but yeah, it's got like a breadiness, like a biscuity side that I wasn't expecting. I think this one in the bell curve of meads, which is, is true of wines and beers, everything has a shelf life. I think this one might have peaked some time ago and we're on the downhill. There is some weird bunk going on. Almost like a like a slight celery-like flavor. Which, by the way, I know some of you are going, well, it's probably because you put metabisulfide in there. I didn't. 
there, I didn't back sweeten. I didn't do anything. I didn't stabilize. This is straight up regular. This one's past its life. The uh, orange blossom is like, it's all warm and like not super high ABV, but that doesn't mean that it's like good. It's got some bunk to it. I need something to pour. Traditional orange blossom looks beautiful. Does not taste very good. We are going to now move on to the next one. We're gonna keep traveling down the traditional road. Next up, we have a traditional clover mead. Now this one, um, a little bit of a uh, um, degassing. That's exciting. Just a little bit of CO2 release there. It's also very clear. Looks good. But yeah, got a little carbonation going on here, which is exciting. Ooh, ooh, this one also has a funk. That same like not quite celery. I don't know what aroma that is. Almost a slight nail polish from River. Ooh. It's a smidge of acetone. There's a lack of honey character. I think the problem, and I've said this previously, if, you're, if you've ever tried to make a um, dry traditional, it is hard as heck to make a dry traditional. That's good. And all of these are gonna be dry. So this one, you're so dependent on your yeast doing the right things, giving them a healthy fermentation. You're also dependent on the honey quality being amazing, fermentation process being perfect. Like dry traditionals are hard. This is not very good. Ooh, yeah, that, whatever fusel that is, is rearing its ugly head even more. That one's not great. Also, shout out to my synthetic cork gang because I haven't had to worry about these going bad or storing them correctly because synthetic corks don't require you to actually put any sideways bottles, anything like that. So here's our pear mead. Again, these are all the same rough age. I haven't been saying the age, but they're about each, each is about four and a half years old. Also very clear. Clarity is very nice. This shows, goes to show that clarity uh, comes naturally with time. Ooh, that one smells much brighter. This needs back sweetening. Woo! That's bright, bright, bright acid. Okay. I don't know what happened to this one. But all of the acid balance has just risen out. And it is very, very acidic. So much so that, like, you get a little bit of pear essence, but so much acid is just punching you in the face. That's a good, that's a no for me. Oh, that's a bummer. It's excited for that one. Okay. I think the problem there is that pear flavor was not supported by um, honey warmth. If I were to do something different with that one, it would have been, th these have all lacked tannic value. So oaking, doing something to fill up, fill, build out the body. But more specifically, oak, back sweeten, even a smidge, even 10 points, and adjust acid balance. That one could have been good, but I also think the bell curve, it's on the other end. Next up is a mango mead. My first attempt at a mango mead that used, I remember this one vividly. It was a monthly mead back when I did those, and it um, used a puree. So that was interesting. Very, very clear, as you can see, looks pretty good. Mmm, there's that smell. That some very familiar celery-ish smell. These all have that problem. They're like warm and you don't get a lot of booziness. There's not a lot of tannic value. Mango's gone. There's, there's like this very, very, very faint mango flavor. Somewhat of a fruitiness. Honey character is just very melded. There's not like sweetness. These are missing sweetness. This is disappointing, but not too disappointing because it's the first time I did it, and um, I wasn't using proper, I'll say proper methods necessarily. So knowing what I know now, I could kick this thing's butt if I tried it again. Yeah, old, I mean, bell curve, it's gone. There might have been a day that this thing was good, but I don't, don't think so. That day is not today.
right. This one's definitely darker, different, different color. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, it's got that very warm aroma. I mean, the honey character I like on this one. You definitely get, I, this is very fun because I get to see what honey aroma and flavor and stuff taste is like years later. The brightness is gone from this, but that I still get floral. Here we go. It's warm. Not a lot of pear. Pear is hard though. As I've learned, pear flavor dissipates pretty quick. This one has more, um, more tannic value for sure. I do wonder if having aged on a small amount of lees has perturbed or messed these up over time. Still not great. It's, I don't know, not balanced. I'm just so bummed. I wish these were, I wish I had done a little more research on balancing early on. If you're watching this and you are just a few meads into your universe, get look up videos on balancing. You know, I think doing the most has one. There's a bunch of things, but understanding what it means to balance a brew will fix a lot of your problems. All right, last but not least, lemon and lime. Now, this one might, I believe I back sweeten this one. This might've been my first, my first go into back sweetening. It smells sweet. Ooh, that lemon and lime. It, I, I joked a long time ago, this smells like pine salt. Still kind of does. Yeah, I definitely back sweeten this one. <laughs> it's funny is out of all of these, this one and the apple cinnamon are the only ones that have matured well. Like the lemon and lime flavor is there and it's very limeade-esque but there's sweetness and honey to support that has a tannic value. That one's pretty freaking good. I think it took a long time to get to this point though, because when I first put it all together, the lemon and lime was like overwhelming. And I actually remember putting these, the rind in and doing some stuff, which could have helped some tannic value, but more specifically could have also added more bitterness. And there is a lot of bitterness in here, but because there's a smidge of sweetness, this thing does not, hurt and does not have as many problems. It's pretty good. I only have two winners out of this and they are right here. Apple and cinnamon, lemon and lime. All of these other guys have a, a couple major flaws. They are lacking tannic value for one, meaning they don't have any body. They don't have any, um, they could like the traditionals don't need necessarily need to be back sweetened, but the sweetness would have helped to bring out the honey character some more. Um, again, dry traditionals are very, very tough. And um, they just don't have a appropriate acid balance, but that also ties into tannic value and sweetness. If I've learned anything from brewing over four and a half years, five years now, it is you have to understand balance is key to a good brew. Time does help but it also has a bell curve of not helping towards the end. And diligence is important. If I had stopped after making these eight beads and waited all this time to taste them, I would be very bummed. And I'd go six of my eight were total crap. I don't know if I wanna keep doing this, but because I kept making more and more and more, I know, and I'm 100% I'm confident in this, all of these recipes, if I do them again, which maybe I will, I could, I could dominate this stuff. This would be so easy to do now because I have experience in brewing these things more and understanding what I said, balance and blend and all that. So don't give up, make more mead. Um, I promise you will not be disappointed making more. You will be disappointed if you stop because you won't have any more mead, but more specifically, you won't get better. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Two for eight, it's not a great ratio, but um, I think most of my meads nowadays are, are much better. So I'm excited to taste test what I have currently going four years from now, and I hope you'll still be with me when that time comes. So thank you for watching. Cheers.